Jimmy frickin' Butler, aka Michael Jordan's abandoned son, just locked up Jamal Murray to win the game after getting switched on to him during a dramatic final possession. MJ Jr. did everything in a win that'll have the entire city of Miami and a large portion of the state of Florida up all night, scrapping for any bit of content to hype them up. Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat have so far proven the good guys always have a chance in Hollywood. While the Nuggets may have fumbled the agenda when they had all the momentum, the NBA Finals are now knotted at one game apiece, headed back to South Beach. Trusting the script, none of this happens without Duncan Robinson, as the former D2 player in college carried the Heat to begin the fourth quarter, scoring the frame's first eight points and ten of Miami's first twelve in the final period. Against the Joker and the Thief, Thief being Mike Malone in terms of his armed robbery of the narrative when it comes to obsessing about the lack of respect he gets in comparison to the Lakers. This went. This is a collector's item. I look pretty happy there. What happened that night? Do you remember? Something about a broom and a sweep? I don't know. Miami just had a fourth quarter where they couldn't miss and ignited a C4 on the Rockies. With the margin for error definitively slim when you reach the finals, whoever loves the game more will be the team that comes out on top. In Game 2, that team was Dade, don't call it Wade County, as these boys from Miami were absolute killers to close it out. Before this series, I talked about the Heat's undrafted players continuing to prove to GMs around the league that they should have been selected. That message may have very well resonated with Duncan Robinson, as this man was evidently on a mission with his shot making, how he was getting downhill into the heart of Denver's defense, just everything was clicking for D-Rob. One thing I've noticed about Duncan over his past few outings is that this man's extremely underrated when it comes to creating shots off the bounce. You think of him as a pure sniper and rightfully so, but his handle is tight, he can explode out of that first step with the best of them, and when it comes to his deep range bombs off the dribble, the 29 year old from Williams College has some of the best balance, follow through, and pure belief in himself. That performance was an example of how Duncan has to play all the time. When he's aggressive like we just saw him be, you can tell that no one is stopping him. Moral of the story is, we all label him as a marksman, but Robinson's gravity and shot creation have become provably underrated. To be fair, I expect Mike Malone to make adjustments next game, which will center around putting MPJ or Gordon on Robinson. Dilemma then, though, would become potentially how much game planning and general scouting preparation is then taken away from Jimmy. I mean, these guys are on all the time. It's not like Butler's ever taken a rest sporadically like it's the regular season meaning he and D-Rob will be on the floor simultaneously at all times. Especially with how Bam Adebayo's looking, albeit faltering triple-doubles to the best player on earth, the additional elevation, no pun intended, of Duncan makes this Miami squad much tougher to both defend and adjust to in terms of both an in-game and game-to-game -game sense. Gabe Vincent showed up in this one, to say the least he showed up, Namdi's impact was felt tremendously whether it was his floor spacing, passing reads, or energy-infused perimeter defense, this man was all over the place in the best way possible. 23 massive points for Gabriel featured Namdi leading Miami in scoring and both teams in plus-minus, as he was a plus-21. Gabe was one of four South Beach phenoms to finish with at least 20 points. After a brutal start, Max Struess would come along as the game progressed, finishing as one of five Heat players to score in double figures. Denver outshot Miami 22-20 at the charity stripe, and you see why both teams made the finals when those 42 free throws equated to merely five misses between the two squads. These teams don't leave points at the line, they just don't. Taking care of your business at the charity stripe is something my Raptors can tell you is damn important. Shout out to DR DeRozan. I thought Kevin Love deserved a shout out for giving 22 minutes of solid, solid effort. Only six points, but damn was he a force on the glass. Ten big rebounds he tallied up, which were secured based off his positioning, IQ, and strength. Additionally, K Love's outlet passes were on point. He was active defensively with his effort, knocking away two steals. I can't not give a shout out to the GROAT Kyle Lowry, R and GOAT standing for Raptor, 
This man is 37 years old, laying his ass out there, and we gotta respect that. I get it, he was a minus 17 and only posted 9, but he also had 3 dimes, and I thought his ability to muck things up with his hustle and loosen the grip of Jimmy Butler with his extra facilitating and general creation was prevalent. Jokic really got it rolling in that fourth quarter, and this was beginning to resemble a game where his video game-esque wizardry, in terms of how he moves around out there for such a monster, was going to be too much. But after the Nuggets had captured their last seven games leading up to Game 2, sometimes you just get inevitably complacent. But to be honest, this didn't feel like Denver played that terribly. You could sense the Heat just wanted it more, as cliche as that sounds. But this series should now take on a completely different personality after Miami just stole home court. We saw what these number 8 seeded killers did in round 1 to the 58 win Milwaukee Bucks, taking them out mercilessly in 5 games. We saw how they took out a Knicks team with title expectations in round 2 and responded to the adversity of losing 3 straight games and nearly blowing a 3-0 series advantage against Boston. Considering this Heat team has already taken down two 57-plus win teams in the postseason, they're not phased by the number one seeded Western Conference Nuggets. Pat Riley, Alonzo Mourning, and Eric Spolstra's ball club have now won the first two fourth quarters of the 2023 Finals, 66-45, as both teams prepare to fly down south, a telling stat considering when the pressure plateaus and when it peaks. In what now could suddenly become an all-time battle in a matchup many haters were writing off as predictable and boring, the Joker and the Butler are just getting started. 